beautiful. Sega. What can be said about Sega? Well, they're the guys that made Sonic, rivaled Nintendo in the 90s, and later became a company that does nothing but pump out shitty games that suck ass. Is what I'd say if I was a fucking BABY! Surprisingly, Sega actually has a lot more than just the Blue Hedgehog. In fact, some of the most popular games of the last decade were published by Sega. Super Monkey Ball, Persona, Yakuza, Puyo Puyo... Seaman? Oh, I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. But among the list of games Sega owns lies one gem that definitely isn't hidden. Bayo fucking Netta. Bayonetta is the brainchild of Hideki Kamiya and published by Sega. Sega! The game is a hack and slash, similar to Devil May Cry. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! Which Hideki also worked on. The only other hack and slash I had played at the time was the nighttime levels in Sonic Unleashed, which that's a game I actually really want to cover someday, so I'm not gonna say what I think about it here. Ah! But in short, what I'm trying to say is that I hadn't really played a true hack and slash until this game. So, in a way, I guess you could say I lost my virginity to Bayonetta. There are three categories that are why I think this game is so amazing. There's the gameplay, the characters, and the music. So, since we're already on the topic of gameplay, let's just get into that one first. Now, you already know about how the game is a hack and slash, but what makes that fact even mildly interesting? Well, that's simply because of all the different ways you can attack an enemy. Throughout many points in the game, you will be granted the opportunity to enter the Here you can buy all sorts of items, weapons, costumes, and most importantly, new moves. You got all the basics here. You got your jabs, your heavy attacks, your gun boots, and your dodge. But you see, this isn't just any normal dodge move. When you perfectly evade an attack, you enter Witch Time, where time slows down, giving you the opportunity to get some extra hits without worry of being attacked. It's pretty much mandatory for certain fights, and it's actually a pretty cool and unique feature of the game, but Witch Time isn't the only cool thing about the combat. The more successful attacks you get in without getting hit, the higher your magic gauge gets up, and once it's filled up all the way, you get to do these super gruesome finishers. All of them are based off of old medieval torture devices, like this one's a guillotine, this one's from Despicable Me, this one's... Moving on. At the halfway point, you even unlock an animal transformation. It's okay, and I find the panther transformation is most useful when you're fighting these guys. You just spam it running around in circles, getting little hits on them. The game is just so fast-paced, I mean, sometimes you don't even know what's happening. You just see that enemies are still taking damage, so hey, you know that you're doing something right. There's a couple levels where you control a vehicle instead of Bayonetta. There's only two, technically three. In one, you drive a motorcycle through a busy highway, dodging cars and fighting angels that also look like cars. And then in the other one, you ride a giant missile that is also an angel. It wasn't terrible, but I can't lie, it's just not fun to replay. And every time you dodge an oncoming attack, the whole screen spins around. And there are times where dodging is all you can do. So like for a minute straight, it's just <laughs> Even the boss battles are really solid each of them being vastly different from the last. There's also these parts where you need a button mash, and my god is it intense. Like, you really have to mash. And man does it get stressful when your thumbs start getting tired, but you can't fail this, it's your best attempt so far, you're so close! Man, you know, I think that's just what's so fun about Bayonetta. You're constantly weaving between enemies, dodging attacks, and taking them out in all these flashy and stylish ways. It's always saying, hey, you got a bronze trophy, but you know, if you try a little harder next time, you might get a pure platinum one instead. You're the best! It's stuff like that, along with all the different weapons and attacks, hell, even different characters, that make this game so much fun to replay. Now, I think I've talked enough about the gameplay, and it's time to move on to something else. A game is not a game, unless there are characters in said game. Shigeru Miyamoto When you read, watch, or play any kind of media, what usually sticks with you? The message? Don't give me that shit, it's the characters! Let me give you an example. What's the one thing everyone knows about Disney? Mickey Mouse. It's Mickey Mouse. And it's the same way with games. When I think of Kingdom Hearts, I think of Sora, Donald, and Goofy. When I think of Resident Evil, I think of Leon Kennedy, Jill Valentine, and... And when I think of Bayonetta... Well... I think of Bayonetta. Almost as soon as you start the game, you already feel like you know exactly who these people are. Partially because... Y you kinda do. Now, the writing certainly isn't winning any awards, but that doesn't mean that the characters aren't fun as hell. 
Rodon? Yes, I know it looks like it's supposed to be pronounced Rodan, but it's actually supposed to be pronounced Rodon. See, if you actually played the games, you would know this. Rodon's just a total badass. I love all the little quips of dialogue he does whenever you enter his bar. A lot of his quips are actually references to other games and movies. It's pretty cool, honestly. Enzo is just hilarious. He's just a complete sleazebag. I mean, hell, the first time you meet him, he's pissing on Hideki Kamiya's tombstone. I mean, how could you not love him? Just look at him. He's beautiful. Now, we can't talk about the characters and not mention Luca. He's basically just the average Yuri Lowenthal character. There's this one visual gag they do with him early on where he flips his scarf up over his shoulder, only for it to immediately fall back down. And it's funny, because that one little bit somehow perfectly represents his entire personality. He's overconfident in his skills, and more often than not proves how clumsy he is instead. Now this next character, I'm kind of on the fence on. John is a fine character, and she's actually pretty likable in game. But when you remove the gameplay, and just look at John as a standalone character, nothing else attached, she's kind of just a lesser version of Bayonetta. Like while many of the other characters manage to be unique and memorable on their own, John is only memorable because of her connection to Bayonetta. And that's not a bad thing, because when they're partnered up, they're actually really cool together. And those are some of the coolest moments in the game, I'm not gonna lie. Probably the best boss fights in the game. But to me, I'd rather Jean have her own unique, uh, defying traits, rather than just being Bayonetta's best friend, and also she's basically the same character. Just not nearly as sexual. Then there's Balder, who is revealed to be Bayonetta's father. He's evil, he's creepy, and that's pretty much all there is to him. And now we reach Bayonetta herself. I've been trying to write this script in a way so that I'm not just saying that she's cool, but honestly, I can't in this scenario. Bayonetta is just a badass. I honestly don't know how else to put it. To any person that's never played the games, she's just the sexy Smash Bros fighter. But Bayonetta is so much more. She makes quips, she fights angels and demons, she's a nun, she's a mother figure to her own younger self, she puts Enzo in his place, she dances, and all of that on top of the undeniable plus that she's got a big butt! Oh, fuck me! Well, anyway, now that we're uh, here with that, let's move on to the true sexiest part of the game. When it comes to expanding my tastes, there's a very specific category a game has to fulfill, and that category is... If you got some fucking danceable jams, I will play your game. Danganronpa, Persona 4, and Banana are all three games that I started mostly because I heard a song from the soundtrack that made me go, Oh! 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 And Banana especially has more than a few tunes that make me do that. The game already had all this good stuff, but that wasn't enough. All of these guys, Jesus Christ, it's a lot of composers, decided that they had to make the funkiest, sexiest shit ever to be the cherry on top. I fully believe Bayonetta would not be nearly as well received if the soundtrack was just a generic action game OST. The best thing a game can do is make you feel cool while playing it. And I gotta be honest, without the music, I just feel fat playing this. But then put the music back, and HOLY SHIT I'M KILLING ANGELS AND DOING SEXY BREAK DANCES! Usually a soundtrack for a game has a few catchy tunes, or maybe they take one tune and then twist it in different ways to make it unique for whatever the situation may be. But Bayonetta just does it differently. Every track feels like it could be the main theme of the game. These are some of my personal favorites. All of those tracks. Beautiful. Chef's kiss. In 2015, a Bayonetta Packy slot machine released, and interestingly, they made new songs and even gave lyrics to a few already existing ones. I think they're pretty good. That's really all I can say about them. I haven't played Bayonetta Packy slot. I don't know if it's pronounced Packy slot. It could be Patchy slot for all I know. For some reason, when a game gets successful in Japan, an anime adaptation is usually on the way. Pokemon, Persona 4 and 5, Danganronpa, hell, even Animal Crossing got one. And Bayonetta was no exception. In 2013, a movie on the original game came out. To... Eh, reception? It's not exactly like the main game. For one, the entire opening is different. Major action sequences also got removed, which I can only imagine was to shorten the movie. Luca literally just became a JoJo character. The movie's okay, but I can't help thinking it probably should have been a little bit longer. It feels like a little too much was squeezed together. Also, there's an extreme lack of music from the game. I counted only three times music from the game actually played, and to me, that's a federal crime. Bayonetta is a game that oozes style and personality, and I think that's why I love it so much. It's vulgarly hilarious, brutally fun, and seducingly sexy. So it should be no surprise that the game would get a sequel a few years later. But what's interesting is that Sega did not publish it this time. It was actually, believe it or not, kid-friendly family game of the year when a Nintendo! And knowing that fact after playing Bayonetta 2 is funny, because Bayonetta 2 
is arguably more vulgar and sexual than the first game. Now because gameplay-wise, Bayonetta 1 and 2 are so similar, making a separate video on Bayo 2 would basically just be me repeating myself, so we're gonna do a mini-review here instead. Get your popcorn, get your little Tootsie Rolls, get your, your Stromboli, and let's get right into it. Beautiful! Bayonetta 2 is a solid sequel. The combat has improved from the first game, kicks and punches feel more satisfying to perform, the vehicle sections return, and now you can ride a horse. So yeah, overall the gameplay got a major improvement. However, I noticed they put a limit on the button mashing segments. And like, isn't that the point of button mashing? Seeing how many times you can press the button in a short period of time? I feel like limiting it is kind of taking some of the fun out of the gimmick, but it's just a small change and probably saved a couple controllers if I'm being honest. So overall it's not a big deal. Just something I noticed, you know, if you want to fix it in Bayo 3, you can, you don't have to. There's new weapons, but honestly, who, who cares about that? Let's move on to something actually interesting. You can now scan amiibos to get items and special cosmetics. You also get these fun notes from Rodan, giving his thoughts on different Nintendo franchises. Bayonetta's got a new outfit and hairstyle, and I'm torn on whether or not I like the first game's design or the second's more. And at the moment, I think I like the first game's a little bit more. But don't get me wrong, this one's still great. This game doesn't really introduce any new characters, besides one who we'll get to shortly. They just do more with the already established characters, which I think makes for a better experience. Like if we were fighting demons with some random person, it'd be cool, but not that memorable. But instead, we're fighting demons side by side with Rodan, and that's fucking cool! Luca returns, and he's more Luca than ever. Even Enzo comes back. Balder returns as well, as a much, much, much younger version of himself from the past, as a good guy now. Alright, so the new character of this game, Loki. NOT THAT LOKI! This wannabe Kingdom Hearts character isn't even really Loki. He's the second half of the god who gave humans free will, and his other half is the villain. Loki's fun, but I don't think he's nearly as interesting or unique as any of the other characters. Well, most of the other characters. The music is pretty good in this one, but it's definitely not as good as the first game soundtrack. Here's some of my favorite tracks from Bayo 2. I actually can't remember any other songs from the game. Overall, this game is pretty good. Just don't think about the story. The first game's story wasn't great by any means, but this one just feels all over the place. Like seriously, we go from this? Should keep a body in this realm stable, but you'll need to reunite this with a soul if you go try and bring her back. I figure you got about a day before it's game over. To this. Just one time. Call me. Daddy. It's needlessly convoluted. It feels like there's two stories trying to get told at the same time. So if you're gonna play Bayonetta 2, maybe turn your brain off for everything that isn't gameplay. Now at the time of me writing this, the third game isn't out yet, but if this video does well, then maybe I'll cover it someday. I don't know, because the gameplay is probably gonna be the same as the first two. Bayonetta is a series I think is one of a kind. If you like hack and slash games and aren't offended by boobies, then you'll probably love Bayonetta. Now, if you're still wondering how these games are the sexiest games ever, allow me to explain. Reason 1. Bayonetta's big, fat, juicy, voluptuous friend Enzo. 